Hey there and welcome to another Dave Does video and today I'm going to keep exploring down the rabbit hole of some of my favourite drummers as a drummer myself. Uh, these are the drummers that have inspired me over the years. So, uh, now we've done Eloy uh, who's a, an amazing drummer and obviously he's just recently quit Sepultura. Um, and it wouldn't be fair for me to not talk about uh, the previous, uh, one of the previous or the most well-known uh, Sepultura drummer Igor Cavalera. Uh, so when Chaos AD came out uh, and Refuse Resist, I absolutely fell in love with this uh, album. And Igor's playing is uh, was and is just absolutely phenomenal. Now he's got so much brutality and power, but he was a very groove oriented drum. It was all about the dynamics about what felt right. Uh, now as Eloy is a massive powerhouse and does his own thing, Igor is more around the feel. Uh, I get a lot more vibe from him about the playing parts. Uh, and just about, I could almost imagine with Igor, uh, Igor he kind of changes it up as he feels. Um, and that's what we're going to check out today. So we're going to check out a live performance of uh, with him, with Cavalier Conspiracy and Territory off of obviously the Chaos AD album. Uh, I will be pa pausing and stopping, etc. So uh, yeah, let's go check it out. War! War for San Francisco! War for territory! Seems like a good place to stop there. So I've known this about with Igor many, many times for checking out Sepultura. Uh, and obviously then also with uh, Cavalera Conspiracy, he always speeds up the tracks. Um, there are some drummers that are real kind of metronomes. They are literally album perfect. Uh, with Igor, it is just pure adrenaline. He And all the tracks are sped up. Some people really like that. I'm, I kind of like it, but uh, I do like it a bit more controlled within the kind of elements of the original song. Now there's some great little controls there. There's a lot of repetition going on there. He even went to the the snare fill uh, to come out to before the fill a lot earlier. So he actually ran that about twice the length that he normally does. Um, but that again, I think that's just adrenaline going there. Now he's also one of these drummers that has the toms pretty much flat. So he and he has them quite high as well. Uh, so he's coming completely down. I remember the first time I learned drumming or I started learning drumming, I started looking at drummers. I think I looked at Lars Ulrich's kit and it was kind of almost like vertical. And that's how I originally set my drum kits up. So this wall of drums. Now it's kind of slightly angled, but more flat. Uh, I still do like to have a more, bit more of an angle so I don't hit too many rim shots. And yes, I know people go on about it and they go, well, if you're hitting rim shots, then you're just a bad drummer. So uh, I'll accept that. Uh, but absolute brutality, great track, loads and loads of power. I mean, the guy is a, a workhorse. Let's keep going. With the fucking answer! Tear it off! Do you know what? That is the first time I've actually seen this kit set up. So he's got... He has a complete reversal on his floor toms and his rack toms, which I've never noticed before he's going around. So he's actually got a real high tom uh, as his first. I'm going to guess that looks like probably a, uh, probably a 10, a 14 and a 16, or he's, got a, or he's gone for a 12, a 16 and an 18 on the floor. Uh, to give him that low low end weight he has that he really does like that uh high end toms for those accents especially on things like this and for refuse resist but i didn't realize it. he's going the other way around the kit so he's he's got his high hats he's got his snare going there and normally you natural flow is to come down here for your floor but he's doing this and then he's coming down to the floor tom over this side uh that's insane that is crazy 
I have never noticed that on his plane before. I don't know how long he's been doing that. Has he always done that? Or is that a newish thing? I don't remember that back in the Refuse Resist day. Maybe I, I've completely forgotten about it. But yeah, back in Refuse Resist, I don't ever remember him playing on a kit like that. Could be wrong though. Let's keep going. So I'm just going to stop here before it changes to the next section because up till this part, you've got that intro, real chaotic, but it is repetition. repetitions. So once you've got that muscle memory in, real easy to kind of follow that in. Then this whole verse is just a standard kind of groove, a little bit of punctuation on the dynamics, but nothing really too challenging. And then you get this next section. <laughs> So I, what I love about that section, it can either go one of two ways. It could be a sound amazing or it can sound sloppy as shit. So he's got that, and he's got to lock into that guitar band. And if you're not right on what that guitar riff is doing, it's going to sound fucking awful. It sounded slightly off there, but not by anywhere near something that I'd call completely bad. Uh, but it's still a fucking good part and how they can put, continue to do it unless you're really listening to it and sometimes the sound guys love to really click out click the hell out of the uh kick drums and make them sound too clicky and then you get that pounding over the pa system and then that really will stand out if you fuck that bit up uh let's keep going <laughs> love that riff it's almost like it was written by a drummer because it's so rhythmical it's not just a standard rhythm guitar track it has got the punctuation the dynamics of what we'd expect from a drummer to write um again i was just looking at his, it's behind his kit so he's really stripped back his kit if you think back from having he's now got to a point where he's just can have uh three toms snare he's literally got three cymbals going there he's got china he's got no ride uh, from what I can tell, he's basically playing China and a couple of different crashes. That's kind of unheard of in metal. I mean, this gives him a great view out the front, but he's really just kind of worked out what he doesn't need anymore in the kit. Um, I only use, I mean, I use three crashes and a China, a ride and a splash. And really, I could probably get rid of one of those crashes and potentially the splash for, for what they for what I use them for. But I do need those two crashes and the uh, China to, to get the definition of the sound of the symbols to switch between the two. So it makes sense, but I like to use rides more than hi-hats. Just comfortable playing, I guess. Uh, yeah, keep going. <laughs> Okay, I misspoke. He does have a ride. I didn't see if it hun hunkered down there. My apologies. I was going, how the fuck he didn't get away with a ride would be insane. But uh, he, yes, he does have a ride there for that section. So uh, yeah, my misspeaking. And I'm sure there'll be some keyboard warriors out there that would have pulled me up on that already. So apologies. I just didn't see it earlier on and hadn't heard him use it. So there we go. <laughs> Cool groove though, it's very loose, it's very groove laden. Now when Eloy plays this, or, and has played this, it's very metronome. Uh, it sounds brutal and heavy as hell, but uh, with Igor, it is just kind of more, it's more push-pull uh, in his playing, rather than on every sort of element, and I love that from him. It reminds me a little bit of the, uh, the, the Vinnie Paul school of drumming. All about the groove. <laughs> Oh, 
So territory is made up of these multiple different rifts. There's no kind of core structure as far as uh, you have a master riff and it's basically stripped back. There's really cool riffs. All of them could be main riffs in uh, any given song. Uh, and this is very much the same with Slave New World. Slave New World, multiple different riffs. This one has a bit more of a structure than Slave New World as far as verses and choruses. But uh, this is a real, again, showcase track, uh, track for cool riffs cool drum patterns and of course good vocals by Max. Ah, so there they're ba -dum, ba -ba 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 -ba. So that just gives him that option to come back rather than ba -dum, ba -ba -ba -dum, ba -bum, ba -ba. then he's got a kind of a switch up to a hi-hat uh, with his left arm or he's got to come in underneath or he's got to have both leave it open so this just gives him da -da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba. he can carry on that hi-hat the whole way through so maybe that's that that's the reason for his switch over because his his ride is right where his normal uh floor tom would be so it's an interesting layout, and I guess there is that challenge about how many of us actually have just played the standard five-piece kit and standard five-piece uh, layout, because that's what we've always seen. And does it actually make sense to switch it up? Let's keep going, Mr. Agar Cavalera. <laughs> This is the bit that Eagle gets a bit of a breather here. So this is because he's had a lot to think about here. This one is giving him a little bit of a time to just not necessarily relax, but to just get his kind of mental process back in uh, in check after all the different changes. I love the drum tech, it's got his bottle of water ready for him. That was great. He knew the song's come to the end, he knew he was going to reach down for his water. That's a good drum tech. There we go. So, come with some water. Psych like your brother. <laughs> Really interesting to see how he's pushing forward there. Oh, he's got the whole body force just powering over the top of the cymbals there and then falling back in his seat. See, I mean, I, I tend to not worry, do that too much. I tend to move left and right. And you almost find that you're pushing off your foot back. But that is like, you can see the intensity of the power that he's pushing into these. <laughs> Okie dokie, there we go. So, uh, Territory, Cavalera Conspiracy, and Ego Cavalera. Now, uh, again, I think it's, it's, if you're trying to ask me about exactly why, there might be the element of why I love the band from the early days of when I first got into kind of the metal, uh, or into that heavier style of metal, which would have been the early 90s. So, obviously, with Chaos AD, I never really got into things like Arise and Beneath the Remains. I do enjoy those albums now, but at the time, really, really struggled with them. Um, but for Igor, it's there is an intensity, but it's that level of vibe and groove that comes from his from his playing. Um, it was the fact that he wasn't overly reliant on putting loads of double kick in it, uh, which a lot of 
kind of heavy drummers at the time were that's their route. If you're going to be a heavy drummer, you put it in. And I'm I'm not I'm as I said probably from my point of view I'm not a big double kick player. I don't really do it very often. But I love use of toms. Uh, and I think this is where I when I first heard that refuse resist. Uh, when you hear that pounding through, I was like, yeah, this is my kind of drumming. I think that's where I also love the things like Vinnie, Vinnie Paul and some of the others, but I haven't got to my favourite of all time yet. But uh, yeah, Igor Cavalier is an absolute beast of a man. And I wonder with the Sepultura finishing up after a year, I wonder if in a couple of years time, three, four years time, we'll see the original Sepultura or sort of original Sepultura come back together for a big tour. Like we've just seen the Slayer uh, announcing because... They've said it will never happen, but uh, it's amazing what some money offers will do to the table. So I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen in futures to come. Uh, but we will wait and see with bated breath. But there you go, Igor Cavalera. Now, if you enjoyed my video today, please do like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.